now I would like to invite Venerable Rijita Dukhi Dhiva to give a sermon in English. Venerable Sir, dear devotees, I'm not going to talk very long and I'm going to give you a very short sermon. And the sermon is the significance of five precepts, as what you have observed just now. And I would like to explain more about the significance of five precepts. Buddhism teaches us truth, the structure of the universe and its nature in a very finest way. It says there are 31 planes in the entire universe. Decided as Brahmaval, Devaval, and Manusaval, and Apayaval. Apaya means hell. Worlds are the most suffering worlds in the entire universe. Once one goes into them, kind of hell world, it may be for many millions of years continuous. Suffering and to get there is so easy. To get out of hell is very difficult. Hellish words are many. Here we observe beings suffering in our midst. Dog, rat, rabbit are one type of spices. We see often with our own eyes. Birds, reptiles and insects kinds of beings that live in water, fish, and those suffer on a small portion of hell. Human beings see what we don't like to see, such as death and ugliness. That's how the Lord Buddha explained. Lord Buddha's 45 years of supreme teaching were specially designed to teach human beings to avoid or stay away from myths conduct activities that send us to the hell world. When a man or woman or any type of being passed away from the first person life, and that is a grand step that we will be born, reborn in any of the 31 planes. One who attained arahanthood will not be born again, but others must continue life after birth. By not committing sinful acts, I would guarantee happiness throughout the present life. One can observe precepts and gain purity for himself. This brings happiness to our association and friends of the world. This must be done by ourselves. No one can do it for us. This brings happiness and peace to the entire family members and to relatives on and on. Good moral behavior ensures that we will never go to hell. Those who observe the five precepts will never be reborn in the lower world. Sometimes breaking a precept unintentionally can lead to serious results. Sometimes without knowingly breaking one precept unfortunately ends up breaking all five of them and ends up in hell for many, many years. Therefore, observing the five precepts, well, it's worth trying because it will make us into a harmless person. Everyone will like to respect us and we will find peace and happiness in this life and future life as well. And I'm going to end my talk here. I don't know what the chief man will say. Now you heard this uh, young reverend give his sermon on five precepts. He spent much of his time talking about heaven and hell. <laughs> Actually, these two words are very important. Uh, 
stand for religion. People cannot talk anything about religion without heaven and without hell. That means religion depends on heaven and hell. One day I asked these questions when I was attending an inter-religious forum. There were Buddhists, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs. In my talk I asked this question. Supposing if heaven and hell were closed down for the time being, what are you going to talk about? Uh, introduce your religion. Is there anything that you can talk about your religion without talking about heaven or hell? But the uniqueness in Buddhism is this. We can forget about heaven and hell. There are many more important things for us to discuss and learn and practice in Buddhism. People try to mislead innocent people, saying that if people really want to go to heaven, they must accept or embrace their religion. Otherwise, it is impossible for the followers of other religions to go to heaven. They maintain this for nearly 2,000 years, this belief. Recently, a big article appeared in a state times. In that article, Catholic Church announced, today they believe that the followers of other religions also can find out their final salvation. First time they announced this. When you study the basic teachings of the Buddha, what he has said, in fact, to him, all these religious labels are not important. We can forget even Buddhism, that word Buddhism, that is not important. Just to recognize, we can say, oh, we are Buddhist. So what is the most important thing is to cultivate our way of life to train our mind and purify the mind. Even without depending on any religion. Now let us take three basic principles in Buddhism. How the Buddha has introduced this. So simple, practical, meaningful, beautiful, no argument. Sabda papas akarana. Keep away from all bad things. So we use that word bad, there are wicked and cruel and harmful and these so are all the dirty things. Keep away from bad things. Kusalasa Upasampada. Do good 
do good means do some service to others. We cannot do some service to others if we are cruel, selfish, narrow-minded, or stupid. We cannot do any service. So when we do some service to others, while supporting others to relieve their sufferings and problems and worries and disturbances, we also reduce so many evil forces from our mind and cultivate kindness, compassion, sympathy, understanding, cooperation, all the good qualities. Uh, this is the real meaning of doing some service to others. Then, when we talk about all these existing religions, we say all those religions are common, no difference. Yes, when we come up to these two points, because every religion teaches us not to do bad things. Every religion teaches us to do good. But that is not the real essence of religion. Because there are many who keep away from bad things, do not a good thing without depending on any religion. If you are going to limit the meaning of religion only for these two things, has no religious value. Uh, that is why in the last line, the Buddha says, Sachitta Pariyo Dhapana. Now, this is the important thing. After keeping away from bad things, while doing some service to others, there is a very important thing for you to do. You must try to purify your own mind. Our religion is there. I see the way how the Buddha has used Chitta Pariyoda Pana, your own mind. Why? I cannot purify your mind. You cannot purify my mind. I have to do this. Don't depend on Buddha or God or anybody else to come and cleanse your mind. Impossible. So you have to use your full effort and knowledge and understanding to purify your mind. To do that, you must understand the nature of your mind. Otherwise, how can you purify it? You do not know the nature of your mind. You are very cunning and very selfish and stupid and very strong egoistic ideas you maintain in your mind. You are very jealous, very greedy, very selfish. If you do not know, if you are not ready to admit that these forces are in my mind, or some of these forces are in mind, how can you purify the mind? By praying to somebody? Or asking another person to come and purify your mind? The Buddhism concentrate more on human mind, not on God, not on heaven or hell, human mind, to analyze, to understand the nature of the mind. By knowing the nature of the mind, then we try to find out the technique, the method, how to train how to purify, 
how to gain wisdom, how to gain enlightenment. And then the method is there in the Buddha's teaching to do this. A religious value is there. So, heaven and hell, these two words, heaven is to create temptation. Religion is have illustrated beautifully. Heaven is like this, you can enjoy your life forever and eternal and everlasting and never die, never decay. Forever you remain a young people, you can enjoy your life. And people say, how nice. A great temptation. But people don't want to think whether it is true. No, they don't want to think whether, whether is it possible. Create temptation. Then illustrate hell. Tell us how they suffer to create fear. But unfortunately, the way how they try to introduce or illustrate the hell, those who do not follow their religion go to hell. Now that is very unfortunate, very unfair. But not only those who commit evil and wicked and dangerous things. If you do not accept this religion, you will be in hell after your death. That's the dirty trick. That is not the way to introduce a religion. Definitely, whether there is a religion or not, whether there is hell or not, we can understand. Those who commit evil, those who disturb others, had to suffer, had to pay the price. And life can become very miserable and unfortunate one as long as they live. Again, religion teaches that here after, after our death also there will be another life. Yes, if there is another one, again we have to suffer. It is natural. It is not a punishment that come from heaven or God or devil. That is the reaction of the bad deeds. And this is the way how the Buddha has introduced heaven and hell. How we enjoy our life while we are here, or even hereafter if there is another life. If there is no another life hereafter, why worry? Do our duty. Don't worry about the next life. Fulfill your duties and obligations and responsibilities without worrying about the next life. You never lose anything. And you never gain any disappointment. Again, those who say that others cannot go to heaven, the Buddha has given a simple analysis, interpretation, how people can go to heaven. If they really want to go, enjoy their life. Because the ultimate aim of Buddhism is not heaven. Please remember that. The Buddha said, there are only three things you have to do if you really want to go to heaven. Then what is the difficulty of going there? He said, Satchang Bhane, Nakudjeye, Dajja Appasmin Piyajitu. These are the three things we have to do. And there is no religion in these three items. Such 
Chang Bani. Tell the truth. Forget about your religion, but tell the truth. Can you do that? Nakudjaya. Don't show your anger. Your anger is natural. No one can say that we have no anger. We have. I was about. But our duty is not to allow our anger to wear up and disturb and hurt others. By knowing this anger is dangerous, can create enormous sufferings and troubles and misunderstanding and enmity, then control. Control your anger. See with the practical or no? Which is more important? Go and pray to a God asking him to send you to heaven without controlling your anger? Or by telling lies? You don't want to stop all these things, just go and pray. Last one. Dajja appas nimpiyajito. Don't be selfish. Don't be stingy. Contribute something for the benefit of others. So when you reduce your selfishness, then on the other hand you develop your sympathy and kindness and good quality. These three things are more than enough if you really want to go to heaven. If you practice these three things, next step will be in heaven. Then who says that Buddhists and others cannot go to heaven? man, during the Buddha's time, came to see him. And very frankly he told the Buddha, you know we are worldly people, rich people, we like to enjoy our life. We have no time to observe a precept and meditate and do so many things. Even then we like to go to heaven, you know, after our death. <laughs> <laughs> the Buddha, how to go to heaven after our death? Ah, then the Buddha said, Why do you want to wait to enjoy heaven and bliss until you die? You can enjoy heaven and bliss while you are here in this world before your death. Uh, this is the Buddha's attitude toward heaven. Not only after this. Nirvana also we can enjoy, experience the bliss while we are here. Not necessary to die to experience Nirvana. In another discourse, when the Buddha was talking about hell. He says, only foolish people think, he used this word, only foolish people think that heaven is located under this ground, below. Heaven is situated under the great ocean. So heaven is under great Mahameru. Remember the way how Buddha has introduced hell. I'm talking about heaven, isn't it? I use the wrong word, you know. 
Oh, I apologize. <laughs> Because I work in heaven and that <laughs> Hell. The Buddha says, hell is not under this underground or under this earth. Hell is not under the great ocean. Hell is not located under great Mahameru, the huge rock in this universe. Because when we talk about hell, we always say hell. When we talk about heaven, we say here. And we don't know where these things are. We like small children. That is why the Buddha said, don't think hell is there and below. Then where is it? Where there is suffering, hell is there. Can you understand? Hell, we can see here on this earth among human beings, how they suffer physically and mentally. Animals, other living beings. Heaven also not located in one particular area. It depends how we adjust our way of life with understanding. That is what the Buddha said. Why do you want to wait until you die to experience heavenly bliss? If you know how to value human, human values, human dignity, human intelligence, you can experience heavenly bliss here. If you know how to make use of this life without disturbing, hurting others, There is no reason for you to worry about hell. Now, just now, Vijita said he wanted to explain the five precepts. We say these are the Buddhist precepts. Actually, they are not Buddhist precepts. Because before Buddhism came into existence in India, even thousand years ago, people knew these things are wrong. Therefore, how can we say these are Buddhist practices? People knew that killing is bad. They knew stealing is bad. Uh, sexual misconduct is bad. Telling lies is bad. To taking all sorts of intoxicating drinks and drugs and all sorts of rubbish is bad. All the other religions also can say. Therefore, we should not monopolize. We should not say these are Buddhist principles. That is what the Buddha said. Remember, the nature of the Buddha's enlightenment, you can understand. The way how he explained unbiasedly, without monopolizing, he says, the Dhamma, the truth, remain forever in this world. Whether the Buddha appeared or not, the Dhamma remain, the truth remain. But people forget because of their ignorance misunderstanding, misinterpretation. The truth disappear from the man's mind, but not from the world. So when another Buddha appears, what he does, uh, again he reveals the same truth. Because of that, we say this is Buddhist principle, but not created by the Buddha or Buddhism. That is why he used the word dharma. Dharma, this word belongs to every religion. So our duty is to understand the value of this principle by observing this principle. We contribute a lot 
for the benefit of others. It's not only for our own benefit. If I say, oh, I don't want to kill, I don't want to steal, I don't want to do this or this, because I have to suffer. It's a very selfish idea. If there is no suffering, I can do all these things. Ah, that is what we have to. When you, we keep away from all these things, we know that we allow others to live peacefully. We don't disturb them. They can live without fear. And that is the highest contribution. So observance of precept is to allow others to live peacefully. At the same time, we can maintain very healthy, pure mind without any guilty conscience. Uh, that is the significance of observance of precept. I think these two words are more than enough. So thank you very much.
Oh, 